All right, we are back with Seminole sidelines after, uh, well, at least a almost two months hiatus for Mark Salva. He's back with us. Kurt Weiler's back with us today as we start the Osceola's Seminole sideline spring previews. And we are going to start uh, where we need to, and that's with the quarterback for Florida State. Uh, it's uh, you were about less than 30 days away from the start of spring practice, a little bit over 45 days removed from the bowl game. Uh, so listen, we're starting to get fired up for spring football. Sometimes it feels like it takes an eternity between the last game and the first spring practice. Uh, with all that's been going on with other sports, uh, including football recruiting, uh, certainly seems like no time has gone on. Uh, but Kurt, you actually wrote your article today uh, for Florida State.rivals.com, the Osceola.com on uh, the quarterback position for Florida State heading into 2023. Obviously, you know, just two short years ago, Kurt, we were asking ourselves questions here covering Florida State about whether they had a legit major college quarterback on its roster. Uh, now they have arguably one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the nation returning for 2023 uh, in Jordan Travis. And we'll talk about some of the uh, other guys in the room, but just talk about your overall perspective going into uh, next March spring practice period. Yeah, I mean, it's the Florida State quarterback room, I think, is, is is in good a spot as it's been since, I mean, you can make the case 2014, like kind of that that second that second Jameis year. I mean, obviously, Jordan becoming what he was, and not just becoming what he was, I think the biggest thing with Jordan last year was he made it through an entire season. He missed that half of the game at Louisville, but, but he was back the next week and played kind of the rest of every other game until they were out of hand. And I mean, you say top 10. I mean, I, I think it's higher than that. I think we can even lower that that number a bit in terms of the competition he's in in college football. But yeah, I mean, to have Jordan and then to have, I mean, four scholarship quarterbacks who got through last year with three fine, but four, I think is a, always a safer number for such an important and such a, uh, I mean, all, all hinging, everything hinges around that person quarterback. So I think the, the depth bringing in Brock Glenn and keep getting everyone else back is nice. And I mean, just the continued growth from Jordan continues to uh, to be a marvel, to be uh, unlike many things we've seen from a quarterback in terms of development in uh, in Florida State football history. Yeah, and we're going to get into a little bit of the rankings towards the end, have a little bit of fun with this, because I do think we all probably think that Jordan's above 10, in, definitely inside the top 10, but exactly where that is. So we'll have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, Mark, just your overall assessment of the quarterback room as they start to go into 2023. And just from your perspective, obviously Jordan is the guy that's his team, uh, will be until he's not here anymore. Uh, what do you look for as far as his improvement uh, as he gets ready to enter his senior year? Well, Jordan – Jordan for us is the difference maker. He takes us from a very good team to a great team, possibly, right? Potentially. Um, he's the guy that, you know, when we've had the national championship success that we've had, it's always been because we had a trophy winning quarterback, an exceptional quarterback. Um, and he has the potential to, to be that, taking his game to the next level. Now, where can he improve? Well, let me tell you something. The thing that's been most impressive to me about him is how he's taken ownership of the position in the whole offense and really leads lead, the leadership mantle of this team, put it on his shoulders, um, accepted the responsibility, and has mastered the offense. I mean, this guy, I mean, from everything I've ever heard come out of uh, Atkins and, and Norvell's mouth is that he puts us in the right plays, the right runs, the right passes. I mean, he's mastered the offense. So he's got that part down, and he will only get better having that coach mentality, that coach on the field mentality. So that, to me, is a huge, huge thing. The other, thing, I think, the thing where maybe we can expand this offense, if you want to. I mean, there's so much talent around him, and that's the thing that's really excites you about this is that you can't on him. Be with the addition of Jaheim Bell and Morlock and and the, and the tight ends that we now have that intermediate passing game. I mean, he does really well in the RPOs and the skinny posts down the middle and stuff, but maybe having more of a mid-range passing game, uh, timing on the throws, location of those throws. He throws a deep, great deep ball. He throws a great deep corner route in that hole. He throws the skinny posts really well. He throws the swing routes really good. Now we let's get that intermediate passing game with the tight ends and the backs involved and be a little more, you know, just another facet to this offense. I think that could be the place to where this could really improve 
because he, he <laughs> this offense gives you problems all over the field. And Jordan, and it starts with Jordan Travis. And as far as yeah. the rest of the quarterback room, you're right. I mean, Tate uh, showed us he can do it for a half. And, you know, that's great. And he, and he's had some, some, some real success, but is, we you just don't know if, if the, it was all on him, but the thing is there's enough pieces around him. He doesn't have to be George. I think they're good enough to win. Yeah. And I think one of the more interesting things for Jordan this spring will be uh, getting comfortable with those new pieces, right? The Kyle Morlocks, Jaheim Bells, Akeem Williams, uh, you know, just rep after rep getting timing. I think that's as big uh, as anything because we know they're going to come in and use some of those guys are going to play automatically once they get on uh, campus. Uh, you know, you would think Kyle and Jaheim certainly are going to be guys that will be in your two deep by the time we get to the fall. Hakeem Williams, yeah. you know, obviously is the most Which talented right. player they've signed. And uh, so, listen, uh, that, I think that's going to be a big part of what's important for Jordan Travis. Uh, I do think that, uh, obviously, every snap, I think that you could have a legitimate battle uh, between all three of the, the, the young quarterbacks, Tate, uh, Brock and of course AJ. Uh, AJ and Brock came in highly regarded. Uh, at one of these, uh, <laughs> at some point, they're going to bring in one of these guys that actually will compete. You know, as a redshirt or a true freshman uh, coming in early. But uh, you know, just your thoughts on the backup quarterbacks, Mark. What are you looking for uh, if you're Tony Tokarts and Mike Norvell? How do, how do you want those guys to distinguish themselves in the spring practice period where they know? that they are going in uh, just competing for a backup position. Yeah. Well, the, the great thing about this off Tate doesn't take can be Tate. And, um, you know, the, with the pieces around him, he, he can, if he can execute the offense the way it's meant to be and have the things that he likes to do. I'm sure, you know, there, there are, there's packages that, that he likes better and different that uh, he can execute those and, and we can be successful on offense for the, for the two younger guys. I mean, they're going to be battling to, you know, to learn the offense, to get acquainted with, uh, you know, uh, you know, leading the offense, the terminology, the pace, the, you know, getting in and out of plays, checking plays, all that stuff. That's a that's a big ass, especially for a true freshman and even a redshirt freshman. It's still a big ass. So those two are going to be competing. I guess the big question is coming out of spring, if one of those two separates from the other. And I'm talking about uh, Blake or excuse me, Brock and, and A.J. Duffy. Um, if one of those two separates one, do, 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 do they both stay, you know, cause there, we, you got that second transfer window, you know, would, would they both stay? I hope they do. I hope that, you know, they continue to develop. I mean, we're, what other offense are you going to go that highlights a quarterback like this one you know, does, you know, with the, with the balance that we have. So, um, that, that would be the question for me. Yes, I think the use of oars is going to be very important in the spring yes. practice, post spring For practice sure. depth chart. I mean, because I have the same thing that you, I have the same question you do, Mark, and I'm sure Kurt's got it too. Uh, listen, if for whatever reason, if Tate Rodemaker were to end up third on that depth chart coming out of spring, is he a guy that considers the portal? So, yes, I, I and listen, that's the new reality. Uh, these post spring portals, we're going to see it all over the place, uh, not only at quarterback and not only at, in Tallahassee, but all over college football. Uh, Kurt, just your thoughts on uh, what you're looking for out of the young guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see Brock Glenn. It's always, I mean, all eyes on the new quarterback coming in. And he was, I mean, we talked to him a few weeks ago now, and he was pretty candid about knowing, like, I'm not going to play this year outside of maybe getting in in some late-game situations, kind of maximizing the four games you can play while redshirting. But I think, I mean, for him, he admitted, he's like, I think it's really valuable that Jordan's back. And I maybe didn't know that was going to happen. And, like, to where other quarterbacks may not see that as a good thing. I think for the spot he's in right now, he's going to get a, a year to learn under Jordan, and I think that can be very valuable for him. I think the thing for AJ, I mean, the, the AJ Duffy, for as much as we got to watch practice last year, I think there were days where, I mean, he had the best throw of the day. I think the thing for him entering year two now with the greater, greater understanding of his teammates, greater understanding of the playbook is – it, does he take the next step in his consistency? Cause that was where I would say he lacked behind both Jordan and Tate, especially as the, uh, as the, the fall went on last year, I think uh, the freshman wall is real. And I think he hit a bit of it at, at, a, at a certain point. And so I think the, the reset can be good for him. Cause I think this spring, I mean, it, looking ahead more to 2024 than this year, although I guess, I mean, for the competition of who the battle is, I mean, for AJ's sake, you'd hope he's competing 
more with Tate yep. than with Brock Glenn. That would kind of be a, a bit condemning of AJ's potential here. If, if it's more, he's battling with Brock Glenn and Tate's kind of the clear number two. So I think it's a pretty important, uh, important off season for, for AJ and Tate. I mean, it was great. I didn't get very few people. I would say, Pat, you're one of the few, but we were up there together at Louisville who kind of had confidence that, uh, that, that Tate had that in him. I think a lot of people had kind of lost that. And so obviously it was great. I mean, to have the day game he did at Louisville, I mean, that was uh, unlike anything we'd seen from him and uh, what does he do now? I mean, this is year four for him. He's a redshirt junior all of a yeah, sudden kind of volume. later in his career than you'd think. So, I mean, how you, he's not going to push Jordan, but can he look close to Jordan in right. practice? Can he look like a guy who can be the heir apparent or is it going to become more clear of, we probably need to, to, to maybe bring a transfer in at this time next year. Yeah. 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 I, listen, I agree with you on Tate. It's, it's a big spring for him to just, you know, solidify himself as the definitive number two. And as we've seen in years past, every year since, uh, We've been covering Osceola. They've used one, more than one quarterback in any given season. So uh, establishing that a clear-cut choice at number two uh, for this team will be highly important because, as we will see, when we start getting into uh, the rest of these previews as we get closer to spring, uh, there's some talented people that these quarterbacks will have to uh, work around, work with and around them. And uh, they are actually, and we'll get into it later, I don't want to, uh, get into it right now, but certainly we have a feeling that they could be deeper than they've ever been at any but all positions on this offense as uh, Jordan Travis enters his third season as the full time starter at Florida State. I do want to ask you guys this about Jordan. Uh, obviously, uh, he had a cool trip out to the Super Bowl this week. Uh, he and Trey Benson, uh, the product of, I don't know if that's the NIL or the collective. I don't know who's responsible, but anyway, pretty cool trip that they were able to set up that for those guys. And, uh, but I do want to ask you guys about this. We've you know, listen, we bragged uh, about the way Jordan played long before he started having major league success on the field. We talked about that even in 2020, that he played like a warrior. But just in y'all's opinion, just to ask you this, uh, what is his greatest strength? Is it, is, is it his physical skills, his tangibles, or is it his intangibles, uh, the way he leads, the, the way he carries himself, all of those things? And maybe at this point, you, you may not can have one without the other, but just your thoughts on, you know, is he, is it, is it, we certainly know it's a combination of the two, but if you had to pick uh, one of those two things, what would you say uh, intangibles or tangible strength? For me, for me, it's as intangible. It's, it's, it's his competitiveness for me. That dude's a competitor. Like I said, he, he takes responsibility and he puts the team on his shoulders and he comes, he's come through, especially at the late, in that, late in the year, he's come through, uh, with flying colors. Right. And to me, that separates him from other guys. There's lots of guys just as talented, if not more talented than he is, but honestly, I don't know. I don't know that I'd have anybody, uh, more, there's anybody out there more competitive than, than that guy is. I mean, he, and he showed it right from the get go, even when he wasn't a well-developed quarterback, right. He, he, I, I was up at Boston college when he, when he, you know, won that game yeah, single handedly with those runs. Yeah. You know, and that just, that to me, just, and now, now he's added his his skill set has improved so much, and he's and he and he's added that on top of that competitiveness, just makes him that much better. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll get go ahead, Kurt. Mark makes a compelling case. I'll, 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 I don't disagree with all pretty much everything you said. I'll say tangibles just from a standpoint of I think I mean beyond how he's grown as a passer and his ability there. I mean I think his athleticism. I remember I tweeted last year something to the effect of like. It's really fun when you're at a way opposing stadiums to hear opposing fan bases like think they have a sack of Jordan Travis and he just escapes. I mean, his his not only his speed, but I think really his acceleration, how he can quickly hit speed to get away from a pass rusher. I mean, we saw it how many times in that Florida game, probably 10 plus times last season. I mean, that to me, it, it, it separates him, although I think I, that Mark made some great points about, I mean, Jordan's intangibles for sure. Yeah, I think that Jordan could probably fake out his own shadow if he really wanted to. <laughs> he has left a lot of people. He is slippery. He, he is has slippery. left a lot of people yeah. looking for their jobs. You know right? what? <laughs> he, he reminds me a little bit of Charlie in, in that way, you know, especially with his demeanor. Yep. And I was thinking about this, you know, driving driving home today when we get ready to do this. You know, this whole thing kind of reminds me of that 92-93 deal where Charlie struggled early in 92 and hit on something at the end when we, you know, hit on the fast break. and he. It, Offense was unstoppable. And then going into 93, a Heisman Trophy candidate, 
and with the skill set and, you know, everything kind of setting up really nice. I'm not saying we're going to win the championship next year, but I'm saying that that, that little transition kind of reminds me a little bit of Charlie in, and that, that Jordan has that demeanor like Charlie has just really calm under pressure, just really making plays under pressure. Uh, doesn't panic when things get tough, you know, is very confident in his ability. All those things to me, uh, it just, it just, it's lining up that way. And it's hard not to get excited. No pressure on the team. No pressure. <laughs> no, no, no pressure. No pressure. Just go win it, baby. Just go win it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be some pressure on this team. And one of the reasons is they got Jordan Travis coming back. So, 100%. From, uh, 100%. From, who, from who to who much is given, much is expected, right? So, all right. There so, you listen, go. you know, Jordan, uh, you know, this is one of the first years. We really didn't have any questions about quarterback coming in the – Last year, other than that might could there be a surprise in camp, which we didn't think there would be, and there was not. Uh, so, you know, there is no intrigue about the quarterback position. I think everyone associated with Florida State, from Mike Norvell uh, to his football team, to anybody that follows Florida State, is probably uh, happy about that. But uh, you could have some uh, some great water cooler debate on where he ranks in returning quarterbacks. So I'm going to give you guys ten names, not including him. Uh, and you tell me where he would rank in this group. Uh, and I'll, and this is in no particular order other than I'll start with the Heisman Trophy winner. Caleb Williams from USC, Derek May from North Carolina, Michael Penix from North, uh, Washington, excuse me, Bo Nix from Oregon, Jaden Daniels from LSU, Sam Hartman, now Notre Dame, Grayson McCall, Coastal Carolina, Cam Rising, Utah, uh, J.J. McCarthy, Michigan, and let's go with Dylan Gabriel, who we've seen him play against I think and that would be those are 10 quarterbacks coming back how many of those guys maybe it's the easiest way to answer this ask this question how many of those guys would you place in front of him if you're talking how many would I place in front of him in in this offense and how they built this offense around him it might be just Caleb Williams okay. like honestly I mean I think it's hard to say he deserves to be ahead of the Heisman winner and I think Mike Norvell could do some really cool things with Caleb Williams I mean he had a pretty stellar season but I I, I would take him I think over Drake May in this offense I mean Michael Penix is another interesting one that's probably those are probably the only three I'd really consider putting ahead of Jordan right now okay well just in the pantheon of you know, how would you rank him total in that if it, outside of the offense just pure quarterback play probably third okay maybe fourth okay so that's that's about what i thought that's about yeah what I, I mean so so you, you know, as you go down that list i start thinking about arm talent and it, i know he's going to confuse jordan travis with dan marino right i mean his, his a lot of those guys on that list have tremendous arm talent. I remember watching Michael Penix spin it. Drake May can spin it. Caleb Williams can spin it. Um, Sam Hartman can spin it. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys on that list that have really great arm talent and can place the ball really well. I think, the again, the X factor with Jordan is his competitiveness and his ability to escape. I don't think Caleb Williams is – nobody's as good a runner as him out of those guys. He's the best runner escape bars for sure. And his improvisation is probably better than all of them. Um, so, you know, it, it, so where do you weigh one over the other? You know, like, like Kurt said, you know, Mike Norvell could probably do a lot of things with a guy like Caleb Williams or Drake May or Michael Penix. I mean, you know, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I, I placed Jordan probably just right there, three, four, five in there, just because they might have better arm talent, but he has the best escapability out of all of them. And really that to me puts him up maybe even a little bit higher, two or three. I mean, that's, that would make, that's what makes him special. Now you know, when you go competitiveness, I wouldn't take him over anybody. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I kind of tend to agree with you guys. I think he's top three or four coming back uh, regardless of whether it's the offense or just a, a top returning player. Uh, I certainly do. I do believe that. I do want to kind of have fun with this question. Let's assume that, uh, take out Jordan Travis out of this group, and I'll give you those same 10 guys, and I'll go to Kurt's point. Out of the same 10 guys minus Jordan Travis, which of those quarterbacks would you think would be most fun to watch play in Mike Norvell's offense? 
I mean, I, Caleb Williams. Yeah, okay. like a, I, fi- I, figured like a, a, I figured you were going to stick with that one. <laughs> Michael Penix also, though. I mean, all of them. But but I, I think the fun thing with Mike Norvell, I mean, he builds his offense around what it does. He is he has had many years to build it around Jordan. I think he would have a lot of fun building around those guys as well. I mean, Michael Penix, we forget, a Tampa Bay kid who was considering Florida State on signing day before going to Indiana. All right. Yeah. Sully? Uh, go through that list again. Uh, C- Caleb Williams, uh, Drake May, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, Sam Hartman, Grayson McCall, Cam Rising, JJ McCarthy, and Dylan Gabriel. Wow. Um, I mean, the, the, the only one, the only one to me would have to be Caleb Williams, I guess. Um, just because he does have a little bit of him, but he's again, he's not as good a runner as, as Jordan, but he can improvise. Um, Penix, Penix runs a little bit. I, I, I watch, only watch him one or two times. I don't know that he's he's got the improvisational uh, acumen that that Jordan has. So, but either one of those guys, I just see. all right. Well, I'm gonna give you a couple see, more you know, questions. Sam and... Hartman, just see what he looks like with talent. Well, and in a non-gimmick yeah. offense, I'm fascinated oh, yeah. to see what he looks like. Yeah, I, I, I had I had Hartman down just because uh, I'd want to see what he could do with those many weapons and uh, no uh, delayed draw, whatever we're going to call that little running thing they do inside yeah, zone draw. read. Yeah, so I'd go, I'd go there. Well, it's got a little draw type action to it. Delayed, it's delayed, whatever it is. All right, so let's 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 just do some uh, uh, spears up, spears down. Kind of like thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, so if you agree, it's it's a good it's spears up. If you don't agree, it's spears down. ACC wins. Uh, Florida State wins ACC championship next year. Is Jordan Travis sitting in New York for the Heisman Trophy presentation? Not winning, but sitting in New York City. Oh yeah, spears up. Sorry, right, yeah. So, okay. Okay. All right. So that that was uh, that was. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. Because that, 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 that means we either we we we've lost as many, more, two games maybe at the most. We might have yeah. lost to Clemson, but beat Clemson in the second game. That's that would be that scenario where we lose two games, maybe losing LSU or something else down the line. But okay. yeah, but if we do we do that, he's in. Last question, and we'll end up the quarterback preview for now. We'll come back and talk more about it in the spring. If Florida State is in the college football playoffs next year. Is Jordan Spear, uh, Spears up, Spears down? Yeah, Mark, we got to talk about it. Spring. <laughs> Spring. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. All right, keep going. If, if they're in the college football playoff, more likely that Jordan Travis has won the uh, Heisman or less likely? More likely. I, uh, the the, odds only, would the be, only way. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kurt. No, yeah, the odds would be the odds would be good that if Florida State is there. That that Jordan probably won the won the Heisman. I mean that's yeah. So for me, like like I said, he he makes us a good team to a great team. And if he and if he continues to improve and and he does what we think he can do, then that means if if we're in the playoff, that means that's what he did. So he right. he would more likely than not, I think. Okay. All right. So when was in its totality from Jordan to Brock four deep? When was the last time you felt this positive? about Florida State's quarterback room. Y'all both been following the program for a long time. I, I mean, it, 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 it's probably 2014, just because you knew what you had then in Jameis. I mean, the depth, I mean, Sean McGuire proved himself to, I think, I mean, be somewhat Tate Rodemaker ash capable of when you in a your game. I mean, Tate might have to do a little more before, before I'm willing to put him in that conversation with some of the games Sean McGuire won, like that Clemson game in 2014. But that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind from, from my time. I only go back to 2008 of, of being around the program. Okay. I will say Chip Ferguson, Peter Tom Willis, Casey Weldon, Brad Johnson. That quarterback. So you're right. going back to 1987, 88, 88, 88, 88. Yeah, yeah. the year after yeah. Danny Mac. That was, that was Chip, and each one of them started the next year. Chip, Peter Tom, then Casey and Brad. That's, yeah, that's then the, then that next group was Charlie, Danny Cannell, uh, Marcus Alton, and I cannot. No, remember. no, no. It, 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 was, it was Charlie, Cannell, uh, Busby. That's right. Thad Busby and, uh, oh, Kenny Felder. 
Yeah, yep. Jimmy Felder too. That, that was a pretty K-Rock. good group. That was a yeah. pretty good. All right. Well, listen, guys. I uh, don't want to b- belabor this any longer. We uh, had a good, nice little conversation about the quarterbacks. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch them get started on March sixth. Uh, Kurt's article is online. Please check that out. And of course, we will have our defensive ends preview on Thursday, and we'll follow that up with not only a we'll have the written preview plus the video preview. So we'll be back on Thursday or Friday with a video preview for defensive ends, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, nine times with these spring football previews uh, before FSU hits the field on March 6th. Uh, So thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kurt. And uh, we will talk to you soon on Seminole Sidelines. Go Knowles, baby.